first two or three sentences or words of our sentence and don't know what we're talking about. You tell about. them they automatically come on. I told them that, but they said that that was one of the, yeah, there's a little, a little bit of a delay. What, sir? Did you call me, sir? I did call you, sir. Hey. Sir? I am impressed. How long has it been? That's the first one I heard, sir. I'm a respectful person. I know that. <laughs> Moving right along, sorry. <laughs> Hello, Mayor. Well, I see a red light, and I don't know whether that means, don't know what that means do it or don't do it. Do do it. Red, it's a red, red light. Mean go. Red, red mean go. Means green mean go. Very good. Let's see. We're good? Okay. Okay. Damn. Red means go. We've yeah. got to address that system right there to start with. So if I get that's... a ticket, that's my fault because I just that's, have to council meeting. That's, 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 that's exactly <laughs> right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our committee meeting uh, this afternoon. As you can obviously tell, Mayor Castleberry is not here tonight, and I'm sitting in for him. Uh, in our committee meeting this evening, we have three items that uh, are on our agenda uh, we're going to talk about the conductor, which will be opening soon in downtown Conway. Uh, Mr. Grimes will then address the salary survey review. And then Ms. Rogers, uh, Felicia Rogers from the mayor's office will address the American Rescue Plan Act. So uh, first of all, this evening, uh, Mr. Jeff Standridge will have a presentation uh, for uh, the new conductor uh, building that's opening in downtown Conway. Uh, he has with him tonight Grace Rains. And uh, Jimmy Warren is also with him. And Mr. Standridge, I'm going to shut up and let you have the floor. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And thank you all for having us. We'll, we'll uh, be as brief as possible. You, uh, some of you got a chance to see the Arnold Innovation Center that will be opening this month. Uh, it is a five-plus-year uh, culminating event uh, that started in 2013, actually, so more than five years, uh, when we started exploring what is it about Conway that we're not generating the startup companies that, that some of our uh, 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 cities that are of the same size and makeup around the country are generating. So we started studying and studied that problem for about nine, nine uh, months or so. And uh, we found out that entrepreneurs need access to, uh, to experts in the form of, of mentors, coaches, uh, counselors, what have you. They need access to an entrepreneurial culture and a place where they can come and gather and share ideas and, and, and have those creative collisions. And then they needed access to capital. So the first thing that we did in 2015 was we announced the start of Cadron Creek Capital. Some of you may remember that. Uh, we recruited about 62 investors. Uh, we became uh, known as the largest member managed fund in the state of Arkansas, and we invested in about 15 companies. A few weeks, a few months later, rather, uh, the University of Central Arkansas engaged in a uh, contract with Startup Junkie Consulting, which is a uh, company up in Northwest Arkansas who had been doing entrepreneurial ecosystem building for about eight years at that time. And fast forward to 2016, UCA entered into a relationship with Startup Junkie Consulting to actually create what we know as the conductor uh, here in Conway. So the conductor is a public-private partnership between the University of Central Arkansas and Startup Junkie Consulting. We have uh, broadened our partnerships beyond that, which Grace will talk about in a few moments. But our focus is on innovation, entrepreneurship, talent development, and economic empowerment. And we'll talk about those very, very briefly. Um, obviously, innovation and entrepreneurship, 85% of all net new jobs, 85% of all net new jobs in our country get created by small businesses and startup companies. So what you take an example, Walmart, a few years ago, uh, they announced that they were laying off 1,000 people from their corporate office. They have to grow 1,001 to just be net up one, right? So 85% of all net new jobs, 99% of all employers in our country are small businesses, 99%, and they account for over 50% of all employees. So entrepreneurship and small business development is a critical, critical part of our economy. Um, I will also tell you that we, I am a proponent of, of traditional economic development. I actually sit on the Conway Development Corporation board, so I'm involved in the process of recruiting larger employers who will relocate jobs to Conway. You got to have that. We need that. What we do with entrepreneurship is we talk about economic empowerment. What economic empowerment is, is where an idea gets created, that idea gets commercialized, and you create a dollar where a dollar didn't exist. That's what entrepreneurship is. And so we're focused on innovation, entrepreneurship, talent development, and economic, de de uh, economic empowerment in Arkansas and beyond. Our mission is to uh, empower entrepreneurs, innovators, and makers. We do that through one-on-one -on -one coaching, consulting, 
mentoring, technical assistance through access to resources, events, programs, partnerships, and then guiding them to sources of capital that they can use to not only get their businesses off the ground, but also can help scale them. I've put a book in front of you that my uh, uh, Jeff Amarine, our business partner at Startup Junkie Consulting, and I uh, collaborated on along with Grace and other members of our team called Creating Startup Junkies, uh, Building Sustainable Venture Ecosystems in Unexpected Places. People expect what the conductor does on each coast. They expect it in Silicon Valley. They expect it in Boston. They expect it in Birmingham or in uh, uh, Austin, Texas, or what have you. They don't expect it in places like Conway, Arkansas. The, the four pillars that we focus on are talent. I've already talked a little bit about that. Uh, really plugging in with education-driven uh, innovation and talent engines. Helping every public school teacher, every parent, every child to understand that entrepreneurship is a viable career path in and of itself. It can happen in addition to college. It can happen in addition to trade school or Votex school. It can happen uh, uh, in lieu of. But entrepreneurship is a viable career path, and that's part of our t talent development story. Culture, a vibrant entrepreneurial culture. What you saw at the Arnold Innovation Center, and for those of you who didn't get to see it, I encourage you to come by and let us show you around, is a very tangible place where we are focused and will be focused on building that entrepreneurial culture. Community engagement, uh, we had a partner wall that you all got to see, you'll see a picture of in a moment, of really looking at our flagship employers, uh, our city, our chamber, and other organizations around the state and country to engage them in this creation of entrepreneurs, and then finally, providing needed access to capital uh, across all stages of venture growth. Uh, we're, we're still involved in the venture game. Cadron Creek Capital was in 2015. We launched Cadron Capital Partners in 2019, and we're in the, in the process of raising our third fund called Cadron Capital Partners II uh, that we are, we are raising now that will we'll come online probably in the next month or so. So, there you go, Grace. All right. So, um, as Jeff mentioned, we have a number of partners um, that have made the work that we do possible. So, um, what we haven't talked about is that everything that we provide for entrepreneurs, from our one-on-one -on -one consults to our programs to our events, all of that is at no cost to those entrepreneurs. They already, you know, they already have capital access needs. We want to be able to provide these resources for them at no cost. And so, these partners allow us to do that. Um, we have a, a contract with the Arkansas Economic Development Commission for a 10x growth accelerator that we run. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, we partner with the SBA. Um, Conway Corp has contributed to the Arnold Innovation Center. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then we have our local partners um, here that, that contribute and, and allow what we do to be at no cost. I, I should say one thing mm -hmm. about our relationship with the U.S. Small Business Administration. We're in the fourth year of a five-year competitive <coughs> contract that we won uh, based upon the merit of the work that the conductor does. That was mm -hmm. one of seven competitive bids uh, around the country. So I'm very pleased with that. So some of the programs that we run, um, the 10X Growth Accelerator, we run that actually as a statewide program, but it's for businesses between 100,000 and 10 million revenue to help them look at really 10Xing their growth. So how do they um, not only grow jobs, but grow revenue for their business. Um, we did a level up program that was partnered or that was focused on um, Main Street businesses and recovering from COVID. Um, we've done um, a, prob or a, a program called LEAF, which was Latinx entrepreneurs and families. So um, helping specific, specifically Latinx um, business owners uh, to, you know, navigate and find resources specifically in Spanish um, to help grow their businesses. So we run a variety of programs for business owners from kind of a startup all the way to a Main Street business, existing businesses that are, you know, that 100,000 to 10 million um, to somebody that just has an idea and wants to kind of take it off the ground. And so um, that's kind of, a, you know, the continuum of, of our programs. We'll talk a little bit about policy advocacy. So in addition to providing direct access to resources to entrepreneurs, we also advocate for entrepreneurs. So um, we look at barriers that they're seeing um, and we uh, try and change those from a policy perspective. So um, we have partnered with the Kauffman Foundation. If you're not familiar with the Kauffman Foundation, um, they do a lot of policy advocacy work specifically for entrepreneurs. They have a lot of different silos and initiatives that they do. Um, but specifically, they um, released America's New Business Plan, which was state, local, and national recommendations for how to lower barriers to entrepreneurship from, from a policy perspective. And so we have worked with them and took that plan and created the Arkansas Entrepreneurship Policy Map, which is the same kind of premise, but specific to Arkansas entrepreneurs. So what barriers are Arkansas entrepreneurs facing specifically, and how do we overcome those barriers? And so with that, we created the Coalition to Advance Arkansas Entrepreneurship, um, which is a a consortium of 
of organizations like ours, um, of economic developers across the state um, to help kind of lower those barriers. And it's everything from local ordinances that are, you know, hard for small businesses to navigate um, or have high cost, all the way up to SEC regulations that make it hard for entrepreneurs to raise capital from friends and family. Um, so it's it's a it's a high it's a large spectrum of policy recommendations. But we've gotten into that work because um, we feel like it goes hand in hand with the work we do directly face to face with entrepreneurs. It's advocating for them or helping them advocate for themselves and telling their stories to policymakers so that they can we can lower barriers there. Um, recently, we hosted the Arkansas Entrepreneurship Policy Summit, um, and Mayor Castleberry participated in that with us up at the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute. We brought um, policymakers um, on a local level um, and entrepreneur support organizations and entrepreneurs together up there to talk about um, policy recommendations and how we can update our policy map to better reflect um, issues that they're facing. Um, and we'll be releasing a new version of that map very soon. So um, that's some of the work that we've done around policy advocacy outside of what we do directly with entrepreneurs. Um, you'll also, those of you that got to see the Arnold Innovation Center, um, this is, the pictures don't do it justice, so like Jeff said, we'd be happy to take you and, and tour you through this space. Um, but the Arnold Innovation Center is going to be our new home. Conway Corp has um, established the Arnold Innovation Center, and we will be operating and managing uh, that building. There'll be co-working um, space, there'll be rented desk space, and then meeting space specific for entrepreneurs and innovators and makers to be able to use that space to grow their existing businesses or start and launch a business. We'll have a very small membership and fee for coffee and things like that. But overall, um, it'll be a low cost space for them to be able to grow and launch their businesses. And then our team will kind of have our programming run out of that space as well. Um, we'll have all of our events, programs, workshops out of that space. And then um, we will also have our mentor subject matter experts doing office hours in there to provide direct access um, for entrepreneurs <coughs> across the community to be able to access those resources. So um, today we're here kind of to talk to you about what we are proposing as a partnership between the conductor and the city of Conway um, in order to kind of bolster our efforts and to be able to support more entrepreneurs specifically in the Conway area. Um, you know, we would love to see ourselves serving as the city's support arm for entrepreneurs and small business owners. Um, you know, we would love to, you know, see more, even more programming done out of the Arnold Elevation Center. Um, since that center serves as kind of the heart of the downtown Conway community, we would love um, to be able to provide even more programming um, out of that center to support Conway businesses. Um, we'd also like to be able to conduct a yearly needs analysis for the city on, you know, what are Conway business owners, what are, what are their needs, um, how do we make Conway small business friendly, not only from a needs perspective and resources for those business owners, but also how do we, you know, review processes and procedures within the city um, to make Conway small business friendly. Um, and so we have experience with that with our policy work, and we'd love to bring that specifically to Conway to be able to help, um, help you know, at the, at the city level. Um, and then we'd also just love to be able to add the city of Conway as a partner of the conductor to be able to say that, you know, we're partnering with the city specifically to provide these resources and that the city is supporting the work that we do every day. Um, so we, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, to date, um, the city has been certainly supportive from, a, from a, a verbal perspective, but there's been no city funds that have been allocated toward the conductor. We believe that uh, through a partnership, not only with the state and the other organizations that we're involved in, a city partnership would also position us very, very nicely uh, for the pursuit of some federal additional federal funds to support entrepreneurship in Conway, which we'll talk about momentarily. So we're basing this off of a, a very similar model that the city of Fayetteville and, and other cities around the country, but the closest to us um, was Fayetteville. They have a very similar model with an entrepreneur support organization up there where the city, where that or organization serves as kind of the entrepreneur support arm of the city of Fayetteville. So, um, you know, our ask here is that the conductor be presented as, you know, the city's resource um, that we would collaborate on an annual event with um, with the city uh, to support entrepreneurs. Um, and as Jeff mentioned, that we would be submitting grants, hopefully in partnership with the city um, to support, to kind of bolster those dollars. So in order for us to apply for certain grants specifically through like the EDA, for example, the economic um, um, the the EDA, we'd be able to um, have kind of matching dollars to bolster the support that we would get from the city. So um, it would be a, a partnership that we'd be able to go to go further and, and multiply those dollars. Um, so 
we would you know like love to see an annual contract of around 150 to 250 the reason we did a range there is you know 150 would get us kind of the things that we talked about um you know for us to be able to, to partner with the city 250 would really put us in the range to be able to go after some large grant opportunities that require a substantial match um for us to really like bolster those dollars and and do more there um out of the arnold innovation center um with with that partnership so, you know, I think Conway is, is absolutely moving in the right direction when it comes to the support of the conductor. Um, you know, we, we have a, you know, three large institutions of higher education here. We've got that education piece. We have, you know, commu substantial community engagement. Um, you know, we have that talent, and that community engagement engine. You know, what we need to, to, you know, move the next, the needle forward is, you know, this space, the Arnold Elevation Center that we now have at the crossroads of our downtown. You know, we just want to take that and, and move it move move it even further um, and partner with the city on um, you know taking our, our programming to the next level so with that we will um, let you guys ask any questions that you have for us um, we, we would welcome any of those and Jeff if you want to add anything. absolutely appreciate your time and, and willing to answer any questions you might have questions Anybody want to talk about the building looks fabulous thank you the building looks fabulous beautiful yeah That's Really we, we enjoy good. having you all on the building. <clears throat> and, and Jeff, as I understand, you will have an open house to allow people to come in and take a look at the space. That's right. That's right. We uh, we will open up for some coworkers, kind of a, a, a small uh, cohort of coworkers on the 11th of July. We'll be entertaining another group who will be coming in that, are, that have expressed interest in using the Oral Innovation Center uh, to give them an information session on that day. And probably a couple or three weeks after that, uh, we're still working on the date, but we will actually have a public grand opening where we invite the the community to come and, and not only look at the space, but to learn more about what we've been doing for the last five and a half years and where we're going to go for the next 50. <laughs> did you talk about the, the cost? I think you did, but would you restate that if you don't mind? Yeah, so for the Arnold Innovation Center, um, uh, right now we're going to open up with a, a nominal amenities charge of about $25 a month, uh, and that will enable our coworkers to come in and, and uh, uh, basically choose a seat on a space available basis. They'll, they'll actually have to be a member of the uh, of the Arnold Innovation Center. And so in order to be a member, you have to be an aspiring entrepreneur, an existing entrepreneur, a small business owner, uh, or a designate of a small business owner, maybe one of the employees of that small business. And so that $25 a month is basically an amenities charge to cover um, access to coffee and snacks and some of the uh, luncheons that we have in order to build that community and that culture that we talked about. So very low cost space, $25 a month to start. Uh, we hope to keep it as low as possible and it's partnerships with our with what we've proposed here today, but also partnerships with our local uh, 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 company partners that have that have helped us to actually reduce that cost as well. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hey, how, how often do you see y'all meet? Say again? How often do y'all meet? Every day, all day long. So, yeah, it can rain a space. Yeah. Yeah, so well, the, the space will be open um, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, so they'll have access. So for members, they'll have access during that time. Um, and then our team has one-on-one -on -one consults that we do. So at any point in time, you can go out on our website, and, and small business owners can make an appointment on Jeff's calendar, my calendar, any member of our team to kind of meet, um, learn about our resources, um, and then, you know, any, any issues that they're encountering, we kind of help them work through that as well. So... Um, yeah, we have educational programming that happens every single week. We have a, a plethora of events that are taking place, but our access to our calendars is pretty much every day. So for the one-on-one. If you can't one -on -one. find a time on there, we'll meet you at another time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Do you have to present a, a, a plan, a business plan to be accepted, or is just... Whether uh, on our website, idea. if you go to arconductor.org and you mm -hmm. click on, uh, I believe it's under, uh, under resources... There, on on yes. the tab, there's the Arnold Innovation Center. There's an actual um, uh, interest form about to, to actually apply to be a member of the Arnold Innovation Center. In order to, to book a meeting with one of us, you, you can go there and you'll see each of, of us there. It goes straight to our calendar and there's a little questionnaire. So folks come to us with a myriad of challenges. One is, I have an idea and I want to start a, start a business. And we start with them where they are. Others come to us and say, I've had a business for 10 years and I'm about to go bankrupt. Well, we start with them where they are and help them figure out a plan forward from there. They come to us and they say, I'm doing really, really well, but I don't have enough money to scale my business and I need to hire some more people and get some more clients and I'm going to raise some money. Then we start with them where they are. 
we've had folks come in and say, I need to counsel an employee. I need to hire a new salesperson. I need a financial pro forma to help me get approved at the bank. So wherever they are, we, we do our first engagement with them is to find out where they are, what's the challenge they're trying to solve right now, and then we help them build a plan to do that. And we, we also refer out to other resources throughout the entrepreneurial ecosystem as well. So the Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development uh, Center at UALR and ATU and UA Fayetteville, they have satellite programs around the state. They have some very specific databases that are generally very helpful in creating a market analysis or a business plan. And so they will refer clients to us who need entrepreneurs who've started and managed businesses. We'll sometimes refer resources over to them when they uh, have someone who, who needs access to a market assessment database or what have you. So there's a lot of cross-referring and connecting people with resources based upon, again, starting where they are and what's the need they have at that particular time. Thank you all again. Thank you Appreciate you your much. time and, and good luck with the rest of your meeting. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Uh, next up is uh, Felicia Rogers, who is going to talk to us about the American Rescue Plan Act for just a couple of moments, uh, an overview of funding. And uh, Felicia, I'm going to turn this over to you now. Okay. So as you guys know, the city received uh, a little bit over $12 million from uh, the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, and the final rules were April the 1st, so the mayor has sat down and went through a list of projects that he would like to propose that council look at. Um, and this is just a draft. Uh, the money does have to be spent in certain uh, categories. So this is just a draft of what he thinks uh, would be a good uh, fit for these categories. One of the main things is going to be drainage. He worked with the transportation department to look at several areas that we could improve drainage in the city of Conway. And then um, two of the other things was the Conway Police Department and the Fire Department. We kind of looked at things internally, uh, what each department may need that they don't get to buy because they're big ticket items. Um, so you'll also see Conway Station Park on there uh, because it's a big one that we've been asked about uh, for quite some time about turf in those fields. So we put that in there as well. So we just wanted to give you your first look at it. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can email them to the mayor and myself, and then we'll take a look at it. If you have other projects that you would like to see us look at, we will look at those. Robbie, uh, our grant administrator, was very good to put all this into the categories that they fit in, so we'll make sure that they it's something that, one, we can do and spend our money on, and then um, see which category it would fit in, fit in if you want to change anything. So, well, Felicia, it looks like we may have a couple million left over that's non allocated. Is that correct? Wait, which page are you looking I'm at? I'm on the very last page with page. the figures. <clears throat> uh, no, this this should spend the, every this should spend all of it. This should spend the whole twelve point two million. So, so all those items add up to twelve point two? Yes. Okay. Yes. He's got one question. Never mind. <laughs> and again, this is just this is just the first draft. Um, we'll get our second. We've already received half of this already, so we have half of this. Only two of these items you guys have appropriated funding for, and those are the first two. So project one and two, you've already appropriated funding for those. That's the Sagegrass uh, Sewer Main Extension, which was out by Farve Lane. And then the overnight emergency shelter received a portion of that funding. And both of those fell directly into an expenditure line item that we can spend that money for. So I guess I lost it to Oh, the remodel of the current shooting range. What we appropriated was, was to buy the new place, right? You, for, the, um, sit, for the overnight emergency shelter, you you appropriated the the remaining of it. So CDBG funding will spend about one point eight million, and then the remainder was the seven hundred thousand. I'm talking about the police department. The oh, the shooting police range. Department. Didn't we buy a new spot for that? We decided to stay. Uh, um, oh, okay. 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 yes. Okay. This would be for their shooting range. So this range. is just a renovation of what we've got. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
because we're going to have to add some new things to make it safe. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We want to do that. And again, the, the $1 million for the police department um, is just an estimate. So that's an right. estimate cost of what that would be. So that may be a little bit more, but that's a, our first estimate of giving them a million dollars. So it'll be at least that for them to upgrade the shooting range. So this is what we'll move forward with unless there's something else that comes Yes, so you guys will have us. it. Yeah, you'll have it a okay. whole month. Um, so <clears throat> next meeting, okay. um, hopefully we'll have some feedback from you guys by the end. Um, and then just go from there. I feel like seeing $5 million going towards the drainage. For right. yes. Yes. And also, so the, the projects have to be allocated by a certain date and spent by 2026. So we had to pick projects that we could, you know, allocate by 2024 and spend it by 2026. So. And about the boat docks. Boat slip. Thank you. That I place, like that too. Yeah, that place has needed that for a long time. Let's hope that uh, boat docks had a be before. Yes. 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 Boat docks. Mm -hmm. They've gotten a lot. Oh, it's back to the court streets. And you do it. Yep. Anything else, Felicia? Our window. Okay, hey, very Steve, good. Steve, just have a quick question for you on the uh, station park turf. Is that total that yes, we have yeah. here? Okay. Okay. Mind if it's a they are uh, decommissioned. Mm -hmm. Mind if it's a minus that. Minus that. The AMP uh, designated up to seven hundred and fifty thousand to go toward the turf. Or does that make the total cost of that over four million dollars? Yeah, Makes it less, less so seven fifty less than that. Have, okay, yeah. very good. Okay. We didn't add that in there because we were right. Okay. Thank good. you very much. Thank you, Felicia. I appreciate it. And uh, Mr. Grimes, you have done yeoman work <laughs> on uh, study for salaries for our city employees and. I'm going to turn this over to you at this point. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Better than some of the things I there act you like. Go. <laughs> um, this is new to Ann, but this is the same exercise we went through last year. It's the second year we've done this, and I'll try to go through this briefly. And trust me, just like last year, this spreadsheet is not nearly as complex as it looks. This is just the accountant geek and me getting to play on a spreadsheet and having too much fun. <laughs> So basically, the Municipal League does an annual salary survey of its member cities. And while you know it, it may not be perfect, it is something that's been around for a long time. And it's something that cities can benchmark themselves to by salaried positions. And it actually is a pretty good, after, after looking through it for two years now, it's actually a pretty good um, exercise that the Municipal League does. So what we decided to do last year was let's take our positions and the pay, the average pay for our positions, rank them against the municipal league averages and mm -hmm. see where they stack up and try to attack the lowest, not lowest paid necessarily, but the lowest percentage wise, mm -hmm. because we compete, the city of Conway is an employer and it competes against other employers in the city and in the area. Uh, which includes other cities. And so other people that work for the city have options to go work for private employers, but also to work for other cities. And so this helps try to make us at least more attractive against other cities, mm -hmm. okay? And so the target last year was anything where our ranking falls in the bottom 20%, we don't need to be in the bottom 20% mm -hmm. of the pay on the, on the average. And that's the same methodology for this year. So this first sheet shows where all these positions ranked out. And there was about, I think, eight that fell in the bottom 20%. And then there's the bottom 50% are ones that we could also you know, look at because eventually they may get to the bottom 20% if, if we don't do something. But, but the, the main focus is on the bottom 20%, okay? Now, before I get to that, turn to page two. This is something that Lisa Mabry Williams talked about. It's something we've talked about internally for a while. Forget the salary survey for a minute. We've got 43 full-time positions in the city that pay under $15 an hour, all right? Under, you said under $15 under. an hour. That's less than $30,000 a year for a full-time job, 
right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got fast food joints now paying $15 an hour. You've got mm -hmm. places paying $15 an hour. Um, some of these are very hard to fill because of the low pay, and some of them are demanding they work outside. But what we would like to do is take every, the, the minimum starting hourly pay mm -hmm. for all city jobs, $15 an hour. And what it affects are these 43. Mm -hmm. And you can see 18 um, is in the general fund. It's an annual cost of $58,000. Uh, three is in transportation, $4,300 is the annual hit. And then 22 of them are sanitation. Uh, it's a $19,000 hit. So what that does is add $81,000 annually between those three different funds. But it, it, that's, Lisa thinks it will be a good recruiting tool, a good retention tool, and it's, it's really just the right thing to do. Yeah. Now, what you'll notice too though, if you look in transportation, by bumping the maintenance specialist one to 15, that actually put them too close to the two position. Mm -hmm. So we need to put a little bump to the two to 1550. But again, that's, um, there's actually nobody in that position right now. So that's kind of moot. But if you go to sanitation, there's three collectors that needed just a slight bump too to keep that gap there, but it's $1,600. So anyway, that's the first thing we're gonna propose is to take all those to the 15. Along those same lines, any, well, depending on the time of year, there's anywhere between 40 to 45 part-time positions. Most of them are, and part-time positions all pay $11. Mm -hmm. Lisa would like to bump that to 13. Most of them are very part-time, summertime, help in the parks, mowing, that stuff. But she said that would also help. Uh, it's hard to fill. You can't, you can't fill them $11 oh, yeah. an hour. And so we didn't put a dollar amount to that because, again, some, some part-time positions may work 100 hours mm -hmm. in the whole year. Some may work, you know, I don't know. 25 hours a week, some, some of them are full-time, part-time. Yeah. But anyway, so we, our first recommendation is gonna be to take the $15 an hour for full-time and then $13 for part-time. Part -time. So that, that's that. Now, if you go back to salary scale on page three, this is what we did in 2021, <clears throat> just as a refresher. That we had five that fell in the bottom 20% and then we actually addressed, oh, maybe nine, 10 more that was close or needed, needed some movement. And so just, just walking, let me, let me, we had Lisa and Tyler rank these positions on three criteria. And I think the easiest one to kind of explain that is go down to deputy city attorney, which is kind of in the middle of the yellow section there. Mm -hmm. The first column, you see a three, five, three, totals up to 11. Well, the first column is difficulty to fill. Well, let me, let's, the middle. The middle is specialized skills. It got a, it's five is high because you gotta be a lawyer. I mean, mm -hmm. I just got the highest it can go on. Scale that's right. Five. It's, it's five. Mm -hmm. Five is high. Okay. Three is medium. One is low. Okay. okay. So they couldn't hire me to do it. It's got to be a lawyer. So it's a specialized mm -hmm. skill. That's why it's out of five. Okay. Difficulty to fill three. Well, there's a lot of lawyers out there, but most of them have jobs. And so it's, mm -hmm. you can't just pick them up every day. And then uh, the third one's criticality. How critical is that position? And you know that you could, you could argue these, but you know, it, it's not the most important position. Charles's is, but it's also right. more than a one. So that's, that's the thought process on ranking these. Last year, remember, we also did a $400,000 bump to the police as part of this process. But you can see the total in mid-year increase last year was $493,000, and it was all general fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you'll flip over to the next page, this is 2022, what we're looking at. And again, it's all general fund. The... Doing what we propose here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, eight positions of bottom 20%. This would take all of them except one out of the bottom 20%. It, it take them, you know, anywhere from, well, it, it takes them down to the yellow, but it takes them out of the bottom 20%. And, it, and it's, it's really not a lot of money, but total $77,000 to get them mm -hmm. out of that. Now it does not, there, the network, some of these are so far behind that you can't do it in one lift. Right. Five, yeah. And we noticed that last year, like network mm -hmm. coordinators, very important job, but they're so far under the average. And those are people who could and would leave to go to oh, yeah. North Little Rock mm -hmm. or For somewhere. Sure. I mean, they, 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 that, with that kind of job, they can go with places. Mm -hmm. So we did give them a pretty decent bump. Still not where they need to be, but it, it's a start and they'll fall in that bottom 20% again next year and we can try to look at it look again. At it again. Uh, so anyway, those are the ones, and then there were a handful in the yellow. We've all talked about the inspectors, mm -hmm. and we know that they 
that those are hard to fill and they're very critical because it's public safety. And we always had parity with those. Some cities, you see the differences in the rankings and the average municipal pay is, some cities pay their electrical different than mechanical, different than plumbing. We pay all of our inspectors the same, okay? And so this keeps them all the same, but gets them really out of that yellow area for the, for the most part and, and should take care of them for a pretty good while. But the total of this is $116,000 to do that. So between the two, it's about $205,000 on an annualized basis. If we do this mid-year July 1, it's hundred grand for this year's budget. So I went through that a little bit quickly, but if you have any questions, um, please holler. I got one question. Yeah. I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm the question guy. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Is our funds okay to make this? Tyler? Tyler. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. do we have enough money to make this increase? Okay. Hey, David, on the electrical inspector. Yes. I mean, on the plumbing and gas, it shows 622. I mean, are those, you said those would all be paid the same amount, all the inspectors, or? Currently, all of our inspectors are paid 45760 it would take them all to 50,000 even. Okay. On an annualized basis. That's what I was trying to figure out which one it would do. We, and, we, and we have one electric, one plumbing, three building, and three mechanical for a head count. So, where does Vincent fall in this, Lisa? Had the head building inspector. The head building, ins yeah, the head building. Think so? Yeah. It's not. Okay, so he's not included. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure he's making more than what these are making at this level. That they won't, once we He's making a up, department he head he mm -hmm. salary. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't know what that was. But this, this, this goes a long way towards over. getting us out of the bottom 20% for two years. And of course, every year it will change a little bit. It mm -hmm. raises too. Yeah. And so this doesn't just get us out of the woods forever, but it keeps us up and gets us where we need to be. And it gets us a lot closer. And I think maybe within a couple of years, we won't have any of the bottom 20. Then maybe we can mm -hmm. refocus, like let's stay at the bottom 25%. Right. Move that wow. down. And, just, and you know, the pool will keep getting less mm -hmm. and less, but we'll, over time, this, this makes a big difference. Well, and I like the idea of the um, bumping up to $15 an hour. I mean, that's something we had to do because trying to keep people yeah. is so hard. Yeah, like you said, that's a lot of scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you work in a sports department out there and cutting the grass, <laughs> I, I said, hmm. Oh. David, thank you for your time and yes, work on sure. this along with well, Lisa, Lisa and everyone and, and else that Lisa had a and Tyler part in. do yeah. a lot of the help too, but it, it's it's in Martin Felicia. Sure. But we mm -hmm. um no it, it's a good exercise. Well, we're gonna get a it's on the agenda. It is on the agenda tonight for mm -hmm. later. Yeah. Yep. Because it, it the, the agenda item is to make them effective mid year through July mm -hmm. one, just like last year. Yep. Questions of Mr. Grimes or Ms. Mabry Williams or Mr. Winningham. So what's on the agenda is this. This. And yes. This. And, there's and that. that. Mm -hmm. that, that puts that into words. Okay. Mm -hmm. and the, and the I think slides. I read it. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to make sure since this is my first go around. Yep. yep. Gotcha. Any other questions for anyone? for any of the presenters tonight, either the conductor or Felicia or for conductor. Alderman Grimes. I don't see any hands, so let's, uh, it's 611. Let's take about 18 and a half minutes and reconvene at 630. How's that? Sounds Perfect. good. Sounds good. Thank you very much.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City Council meeting for tonight. The, uh, we will, first of all, we proceed each council meeting with a word of prayer and pledge of allegiance, and if you would like to, if you'll join us at this time. Ms. Isby, would you word sure. of prayer? If you'll bow with me. Our gracious Father, we thank you for the abundant blessings that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for this city that you have blessed us to be stewards of. We just ask, Lord, that everything that we say and do tonight um, is to your pleasing. And at the end, we just pray that you get the glory and honor that you're so due. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll call the meeting to order now, and Mr. Garrett, would you please call the roll? Sure. Mr. Grimes? Here. Ms. Tucker? Here. Mr. Ledbetter? Here. Ms. Smith? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Isby? Here. And Mr. Hawkins? Here. And you should have received copies of the minutes from the May 24th, 2022 City Council meeting. Uh, any corrections, changes, or comments to those minutes? I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the minutes of the meeting of May 24th City Council meeting. All in favor of that signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Very good. Um, we have a couple of items to take care of first. And by the way, I am not Bart Castleberry, uh, <laughs> but I will be sitting in for Mayor Castleberry tonight. And he's, because he's got a television where he is, wherever that tractor is, or whatever it is he's doing right now. He's probably not watching this this evening, so anyway. First of all, first item out of the gate is Felicia Rogers is going to uh, present a key to the city to Mr. Ricky Gully. Can Mr. So on behalf of Mayor Casaberry, I would like to present Ricky Gully with a key to the city. Uh, we appreciate all your hard work that you do in keeping um, current events on your Facebook page and being at all of our events. So we really do appreciate that. And so on behalf of Mayor Casaberry, I would like to present you with a key to the city. Thank you. Yes. Well, those of you who don't go to a lot of city events, uh, Mr. Gully is always there. Ricky, thank you very much for all the pictures that you mm -hmm. take and the posts that you make on your website, and, and I certainly do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, item before we get really started with the council meeting is uh, Conway Morning Rotary presentation by Steve Floyd, and they'll be presenting... Brian McLean from the Conway Parks Department, a Certificate of Appreciation. Hello, Mr. Floyd. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. We want to thank you for giving us this opportunity. Um, we have several members of our of the morning club are here to uh, recognize Brian McLean. Our club over, over the last 13 years have uh, had a service project out at the Cadron Settlement Park and um, this year, we received a $1,000 grant from our Rotary District, and we put it to use in uh, updating some of the, of the flower beds, the, the, the uh, ra railroad tie, uh, ties needed to be uh, replaced, wood uh, boards on the handicap ramp up to the blockhouse uh, as well. And so uh, we've been working with, with Brian, and he's done uh, just a great job, really made it easy for us to complete this project. And we decided we'd like to recommend uh, and recognize him th this evening. Um, we, as I said, uh, we could have done it without him. His leadership and his assistance has been really outstanding. So I'd like to have Patty Kopic, uh, we're going to award him uh, with a certificate. Thank you. 
Very good. Many, many of you in this room are Rotarians, and you know service above self is Rotary's motto. And Brian is a service above self. He's a true servant of our community. Thank you, Brian. If the man can pick up a railroad tie, you don't want to arm wrestle <laughs> Congratulations, Brian. Thank you for that hard work. Yes, sir. And final item before we get started with the rest of our agenda, which is rather lengthy, we'd like to introduce at this time uh, Mr. Jake Briley, who is our new airport uh, director and uh, Jake uh, has come to us after serving in the National Guard uh, for a number of years and, and taking care of a lot of equipment, a lot of dollars worth of equipment. And uh, welcome to Conway, and uh, we, we hope that this is a good stop for you along the way. You and your wife already are residents here of Conway, and we do appreciate that. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. And by the way, we're by the way we're going to have a meet and greet July first at the airport, beginning at 12, 12 noon. At twelve noon, so I'm guessing there's going to be burgers and hot dogs. Yeah, <laughs> burgers and dogs at the airport this coming Friday, and that's July first. What time did you say, Andy? Twelve. Twelve, 12 o'clock. Twelve noon. Lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Lunchtime. All right. Very good. First up uh, in our council meeting tonight will be the monthly financial reports ending May 31st, and Tyler Winningham, our CFO, will come forward and tell us how we're doing. Mr. Winningham. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Welcome. Hawkins and council. Uh, we're looking at the uh, financial report uh, for the uh, month of May this year, 2022. Uh, Starting with the revenue section there in the general fund, you can see that first line item, the ad valorem tax, is a, is a big number for the month, a little over a million dollars. That'll be our first large uh, receipt of money from the county when they send out their property tax bills back in March. Um, and that's up about a little over 8% over last year, so that's good news. Property, uh, property itself is increasing, property value is increasing, so that directly affects that revenue source there. Uh, sales tax, we were we hit on it last month briefly. It was up a little over 7%, and year-to-date we're up about 17%. So still doing still doing pretty good there in sales tax. Uh, you can see our bottom line there, we're uh, net revenue 2.1 million through five months. That's, that's a really good number. Uh, you know, one of the buzzwords right now is inflation, and it's not even a buzzword necessarily. It's a fact. So you can see if you look down that far right hand column in expenditures, you know, we, we it's kind of a broken record. We constantly brag on our department heads for managing their expenses and they're continuing to do that. Now with inflation being what it is, you know, that, that may not be the case going through the rest of the year, but we have, uh, the mayor has, has directed them in department head meetings to really take a look and be mindful that those expense budgets are gonna to start to kind of go away a little bit quicker than maybe what they're used to. So just want you to know that we're mindful of it and and we're gonna keep a hold on it as best we can. And I think you'll see throughout the financials and our other funds, our other departments, uh, the, the same rings true there. They're, they're well under their uh, budgeted spending levels three or five months of the year and, and we're gonna do our best to maintain and not have to come back to council and ask for uh, further appropriations for just general operations. And that's all I've got, Mr. Hawkins, unless somebody has any other questions or comments. Questions for Mr. Winningham. I make a motion to approve the monthly financials. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the monthly financials. Any other comments? Then, uh, all in favor of approving the monthly financials signify by saying aye. Aye. And all opposed? I didn't need to call that, did I? That's fine. That's, fine. That's okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Winningham. Mr. Yes, sir. 
I could, I would like to suspend the rules to move item B9 to the top of the agenda. I moved. Second. We have a motion and second to move item number B9 to the top of the agenda. Um, this is consideration to approve the appeal of an ordinance to rezone 3.88 acres east of Bill Bell Lane at the intersection of Acuff Lane. The, or the zoning now is R1. The requested zoning is C2. Any discussion uh, to move this up on the agenda? I just want to make well, it's my understanding the applicant wants to table it, and so I think a lot of folks are here for that, and they can, if, if that's the case, they can go okay. ahead and leave. And if there's anyone here representing the requester of this item, if they would like to... vote to... on this first. Okay. Right. Um, yes. Let's, vote on this. Then let's go ahead okay. and vote on this. Uh, all in favor of tabling this item or signify... No, for suspending the, suspend the rules. Suspend, suspend the rules. rules. Thank you very much. Okay. Do I don't do this very often. Very often and I don't do this. I don't do... Hey, it's different sitting over there than it is sitting there. <laughs> Okay. Um, what Mr. Grimes said. <laughs> yeah, would you? Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, that item, number B9, is tabled. Nope. Oh, it's moved. No. No. Now we're going to hear it. The rules. Oh, it's yeah. talked about here. Now. Yes. We're now, moving. now we're going to ask Mr. Thornton to come forward. I think everybody's is, 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 is Mr. Thornton he, here? He is. Yes. yes. Mr. Thornton. Where, there you are. Mr. Thornton, I'm sorry. I'm not better prepared to, to do you justice. No, you're good. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, we would request that uh, humbly that you uh, table this until we've got some people out of town on vacation or, or summer activities, and uh, we would uh, just request to table it until next month. So, I move. Second. We have a motion and second to table this item for this time. Uh, any questions of Mr. Thornton or any discussion? I got one. I got. We need to make sure that everybody gets plenty of time to come yeah. back to the meeting because I'm sure some people came here just for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, we meet the fourth Tuesday of next month. I think it's the 26th of yeah. so, July. Yeah. It'll be the fourth. fourth it'll be the fourth Tuesday in the month of July. Yes, sir. Is that good? Okay. Awesome. Good. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Then we need to call a vote on this. Sure. Yep. All in favor of tabling this motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? It appears to be a unanimous vote. Indian, that date would July be July 26. July 26. July 26. Mm -hmm. yep. For those of you who are interested in attending again. And we'll love to have you back that night. Thank you very much. Okay, now let's move back to the top of the batting order. <laughs> And up next, we have an Economic Development Committee. We'll start <clears throat> with an ordinance to extend the franchise agreement of Conway Corporation to operate the cable telecommunication plant and facility for the city of Conway. And with us tonight, we have Brett Carroll and Bill Bethay. And I don't know whether Greg Dell is with us or not, but uh, Greg's not here with us. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, come on up and uh, visit with us, Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Yes, we know you have a leak the agenda, so we thought it better not to bring Greg Dale. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm Brett Carroll, CEO of Common Corp and members of the council. Thank you for uh, your time tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to just talk about this ordinance. You might recall that in February we came and extended our, our franchise and lease agreement in the electric department to make it roughly coterminous with our most recent bond issue uh, and our water systems franchise and lease agreements, are, and, and that goes to 2050. Uh, our water systems franchise and lease agreements or franchise agreement goes to 2045, which again is roughly coterminous with some bond issues in, in the water and wastewater areas. Uh, and we begin to look at our telecommunications uh, franchise and lease agreement, uh, and that one expires in, in 2025. And what we want to do is, is make that coterminous with our electric department, make it go to 2050 for a couple of reasons. Uh, we want to get those, we want to get that, that taken care of while we're thinking about it. But the other thing we realized is that you know, we realize that, you know, you guys, you know, you're paid off the franchise revenues from, from telecommunications. And as you, as you well know, uh, uh, video subs have declined over the past few years. And so one of the things we want to do, we can't change the, the franchise payment because it's just a, it's 5% based on 
the number of video subs that we have. And of course, those, those subs are dropping off. What we can do is do something with, with the lease payments. And so they have been uh, $10,000 a month, and we want to raise those to $16,000 a month to make you guys, to make the city whole in terms of the revenue from, from our franchise and lease agreement. So what we're asking for is an ordinance amending our franchise and lease agreement. The terms for the franchise wouldn't change except to 2050. Uh, and then our lease, our lease terms, the only thing would change, it'd go to 2050, and we would increase the monthly payment from $10,000 to $16,000. So it goes from $120,000 to $192,000 annually. So that, that kind of makes the city whole in terms of what you may have lost um, in, terms of, in terms of franchise revenues. So that's what we're here asking for tonight. Any questions of Mr. Carroll? I make a motion to waive three readings. Second. We have a motion and second to waive the three readings. All in favor of waiving the readings, say aye. 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 All opposed? That's a unanimous. And I'll take a motion for the ordinance. So move. Second. And this is ordinance 0256. 56. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Seeing no one, uh, Mr. Garrett, if you'll call the vote. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. And that passes seven to zero. Second item on the agenda this evening on the Economic Development Committee is an ordinance extending the lease agreement and increasing the monthly lease of Conway Corporation to operate the cable telecommunications plant and facility for the city of Conway. Mr. Carroll, you're still there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I've already talked about that, I think. Yeah, you did. But I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might, might have. Make yeah. a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. We have a motion and second to waive the readings. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes seven to nothing. I make, make a motion, motion for the adoption of the <coughs> ordinance 57 along with the emergency clause. Second. We have a motion and second to adopt this ordinance and the emergency clause. Uh, any further discussion? <clears throat> Mr. Garrett? Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. And the emergency clause, Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. There's no, no emergency there. It is there in is our ordinance. ordinance. There is in the ordinance. The and Mr. Bethay had asked me not to include that, and uh, I should have left that off. How do we need to do that, Council? Yeah, you can just make a motion to strike, to amend. So moved. Second. Strike the emergency clause from this. Mr. Bethay, I apologize. I did not catch that. That's third strike. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, my, you're next. <laughs> you did a great job. We're not, okay. we're not judging, are we? Uh, okay. um, so we have now we're amended... Good. So we have a motion and second to amend. Yes. Okay. Amend, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and second to amend. All in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion is amended. Now we'll vote on the motion. The motion is uh, uh, Ordinance 02257. We already voted already on it. We voted. voted. It was just like I said, that's the fourth strike. <laughs> <laughs> we voted. We're good. I'm fouling We're pitches off left, left and right. Cool right. Would you get up here and do this? Yeah. <laughs> We're about six thousand dollars, and it's extended to twenty fifty. That's all we yep. need to know. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. okay. Have we voted? We yes. Have. We, yeah, we, we're we're we move on. <laughs> we move on. Thanks, Brett. Thank well, you, Brett. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And, I, and I would say that begins in August, so you'll see that additional six thousand dollars in August, and so. Uh, so thank you. Our partnership with the city of Conway is extremely important, and so we appreciate you guys always uh, listening to what we have to say. Thank so you, thank you very much, much. Mr. Winningham. Well. Would that be a sixty percent increase in our revenue from that particular <laughs> item? From ten thousand to sixteen thousand a month. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty close. I'm not trying to feign the heat. Trying to get somebody else involved. Here. <laughs> Okay, next uh, we have Community Development Committee, and the first item on this agenda is an ordinance approving the private club permit location for the Rogue Roundabout, Inc. to be located at 804 Chestnut Street, and uh, we have an ordinance to read for this item. It's Ordinance 02258. Make a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. 
We have a motion and second to waive the three readings. All in favor of waiving the readings, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That passes seven to zero. Make a motion for adoption of the ordinance. Second. And we have a motion and adoption, or a motion and second for the adoption of the ordinance. 58. Any conversation on that? Or we're good? We may have had somebody here with the mm -hmm. road. We do have some owners yes. here. Would y'all like to stand up? I think. Uh, <laughs> or talk to us. Talk this is Chris and Jessica Smith. And uh, we have nothing to say, but we're <laughs> <laughs> We are, we are glad, uh, we're glad yes, to have you here and look mm -hmm. forward to you getting open. Yes. No, you're very welcome. Thank you. Mr. Hawkins, due, yes, sir. due to an ownership I have in this venture, I will be abstaining from the vote. Very good. Mr. Grimes is declaring a uh, abstention on this vote. So with that, Mr. Garrett, would you call the roll? Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Abstain. And Mr. Ledbetter. Yes. That passes six to zero to one abstention. And so we look forward to you getting open. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank you. Next item is an ordinance to approve personnel changes within the permits and inspection department. And uh, who's coming forward on this? Come on. We would love to have you tell us about this. If I may introduce myself, uh, Cecil Corning, uh, Hi, Director Cecil. of Permits and Inspection. Hi, Cecil. Welcome. Um, well, thank you very much, Council. Good evening. Um, what I we would like to do within our department is to create an Assistant Director. Uh, that's to add to the additional duties that we're picking up within our department. Um, our primary objective is ADEQ, which is the erosion which that's became a big issue with the spring rains. Any questions of Mr. Corning? Are you, are you hiring a new person for uh, this job not, or is it an existing we employee? We are not hiring a new person. You know, we lost one personnel, although I'm the mechanical inspector, I'm also the director, which we're less one personnel, but we're going to do it with the people we have. And that's why we're requesting this. Okay. So one of your people are moving yes, up to that position. One of the inspectors will move up to a new, new uh, position, and he will continue doing the inspector job. You have someone in mind already? We do, but that's still not a final decision. Um, we have four inspectors. Everyone is not only certified in their fields, they're also licensed. So also any, what? They're also all licensed, licensed in all the fields. Yeah. Uh, Turn up your hand. <laughs> What I refer to as not only license, I'm the mechanical inspector. I have a HVAC license with the state. The electrical inspector is also licensed with the electrical department. Plumbing inspector is also licensed with the state. Uh, our building framer, a uh, footing man, uh, he's also a 40-year builder himself. So we're pretty well covered with the uh, inspections. Uh, but... Uh, each one of us, uh, we would like to uh, also, in addition to this, the ADEQ, we need to become more educated so we can confront this before it actually occurs. And we're, we're, we're working on it as we speak. I make a motion to waive the three readings. Second. I have a motion and second to waive the three readings. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes seven to zero. Make a motion for the adoption of the ordinance. I have it as 02259. Second. We have a motion and second to adopt the ordinance 02259. Any further discussion? Mr. Garrick. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. <clears throat> that passes seven to zero. Thank you, Cecil. City Council, thank you very much. We thank appreciate you. it, and welcome. Next item on the agenda is an ordinance appropriating funds and accepting the low bid for the Markham Street Jump Start Phase 2 project for the Transportation Department. Kurt, hello, yes, sir. Sir. What you got? Okay, so we recently opened bids for the uh, second phase of the Markham Street Jump Start project. Uh, they did... Uh, the low bid was 
below the engineer's estimate. Um, and this is a, it's a, it's a Metro plan grant project. So the <laughs> city's responsible for 20% of the cost and Metro plan funds the other 80%. And I'd be happy to answer any questions about it. Questions of Kurt Great. about this project. Make a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. Motion and second to waive the readings. All in favor of waiving the readings, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? So how far will this get us down Markham Street? Okay, so this goes from Walnut, which is where the, the first project ended, up past, uh, it, it goes just past Spruce Street. I think about 100, 150 feet past Spruce. Okay. Is, where, right. is the, the actual limits of the construction. Okay. Thank you. Any other Thank questions? Do we have a motion yet? Make mm -hmm. a motion for the adoption of the ordinance, 02260. Second. We have a motion and second for adoption of the ordinance 02260. Any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. That passes 7 to 0. Thank, Thank you. Kurt. Thank you, Appreciate Kurt. Appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is a resolution to approve the public art master plan as the amendment to the comprehensive plan for the city of. Conway and Mr. Walden is stepping front and center. Mr. Walden, good evening. Yes, so y'all were introduced to the public art master plan, I believe, on May 10th. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, we sent it to a public hearing through the Planning Commission on the 23rd and the 21st. Uh, and then at the Planning Commission meeting on the 21st, it was adopted. We didn't really have a, a lot of input at, at, at that point, um, but now we're sort of bringing it to y'all sort of at the, at the very end to adopt it officially as an appendix to the uh, comprehensive plan. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second to adopt this uh, public art master plan as presented by Mr. Walden this evening. Any additional comments? All in fav favor, Wait, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, I think we have a resolution for this. It is. I'm sorry. It is resolution. And it's resolution 22. 29. 29. I, I, did. I did a so move on his saying he wants he want us to adopt. to adopt the resolution. Yeah. I make a motion to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you very much. Now we have a motion second, second to that. adopt the resolution. Sorry, Mr. Walden. I'm still fouling them off, brother. Um, now I can call a vote. All in favor. You can call a vote. <laughs> all, right. all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Should just say aye. I'm going to turn that over to you. <laughs> you just take it. <laughs> right here. Okay. Okay. Public art master plan is passed. Next item is an ordinance to annex 55.91 acres located north of Impey Trail, west of Orchard Park subdivision, and south of Crest Haven subdivision phase number four, and we have an ordinance to read for this item. It's ordinance 02261. I make a motion to waive the three readings. Second. We have a motion and second to waive the readings on this. All in favor of waiving the readings, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes seven to zero. Mr. Walden. Okay. Oh, well, I, didn't, I wasn't sure. No. Wasn't Dude, sure if, if you're you wanted... standing up there, get after it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, I, I just appreciate that I'm not in that seat because you're doing a much better job than I could possibly imagine trying to do. No. Um, this, this annexation uh, went before Planning Commission at the last uh, Planning Commission meeting on the 21st. Uh, it was a, it adopted. All of the departments uh, and encouraged adoption of it. Mr. Shaw is here. He is the sort of the developer for the project. He's bringing in more land to, to annex into the city and develop. And so we're, we're very excited about that mm -hmm. and happy about that. And so we ask that you adopt it. Make a motion for adoption of the ordinance. Second. We have a motion and second for adoption of this ordinance. Is there any, did we waive the reading? Mm -hmm. Yes. I thought we did. I thought we did. Yeah. We did. Okay. okay. I'll wake up. No, that's, hey, welcome to my world. 
I hope we got a recording of this movie. <laughs> oh, it is. It's on oh, Facebook. It is. <laughs> um, we have an order, a uh, motion and a second to uh, adopt the ordinance. Mr. Garrett. The ordinance O2261. Mr. Ledbetter. Yes. Mr. Grimes. Aye. Ms. Isby. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Mr. Hawkins. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. And that passes seven to zero. Mr. Shaw, congratulations on that. We look forward to having you in the city. Oh, yeah, now you're here. Do you want to talk? Here. <laughs> 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 I always get taught, but I would say this to Mick Mahoney. If it's baseball, you swung at every pitch. I'd about have been. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd have gone down swinging. <laughs> Been struck out. And I know you over there. We wanted to hear you talk for your five thirty-five minutes. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to get through this. Okay? Uh, it's, well, it's closer than it was, but you hadn't looked at the back. Page. We hadn't turned page yet. <laughs> Next item is consideration to approve a conditional use permit to allow an automobile body shop in an I-3 zoning district for property at 1215 Thomas G. Wilson Drive. And um, let's see what I've got here. Mr. Walden, you're up there. Why don't you tell us about this? Yes, this is one that we, uh, we routinely get some conditional uses from time to time that we catch through sign permits. This is one that uh, it was operating in that manner when we did the background research on it, we realized, oh, it doesn't have a conditional use permit for this. And so it's sort of a manner to make what was occurring uh, legal uh, and so uh, recommended for adoption. There was no opposition to it. Make a motion to adopt this conditional use permit. Second. We have a motion and second to adopt this conditional use permit. All in favor of that signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. That passes seven to zero. Thank you, Mr. Walden, for that. The next item is consideration to approve a conditional use permit to allow religious activities in an R2A zoning district for property at 1919 South Boulevard. And this was reviewed by the Planning Commission. I'm looking for the meeting date, June 21st, and they voted 7 nothing to send this to us with a recommendation of approval. Mr. Walden, would you care to elaborate on this? <coughs> yes, so this uh, this is for the Catholic Campus Ministries. Um, we've got sort of an emerging ecclesiastical area near campus there where the Baptist uh, student ministries are, are planning at some point once they get money to, to build on the north side. And so they're wanting to build sort of a, a student center there. It's a very, very uh, attractive uh, Ms. Nabholz is here uh, from <laughs> from them, uh, representing them. But uh, uh, when we they've already gone through historic district commission, gone through planning commission, and uh, so uh, look, think this will be a, a wonderful addition to the area. I make a motion to grant this conditional use permit. Second. Right. A motion and second to approve this conditional <laughs> use permit to allow religious activities. Ms. Nabholz, would you like to speak or are you good? <laughs> I'm looking for somebody to take a little heat. <laughs> All right. We, uh, we have a motion and second to approve this. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor of approving this signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes seven to zero. Next item is an ordinance establishing a moratorium on the issuance of sign permits for billboards and certain types of freestanding signs. And Mr. Walden? Yes, sir. It's yes. Uh, so we're, we're asking you all to uh, sort of approve a moratorium for 90 days um, for us to do some more research with our, our sign code. Uh, and with that, the moratorium would be placed on billboard permits and then also for freestanding signs uh, that are in excess of uh, 12 feet tall and which are located outside of the interstate sign zone. So it's kind of, we, we try to define this uh, pretty narrowly. So it doesn't, it doesn't affect those within a thousand feet of the interstate, uh, but it does affect those that are over 12 feet tall that are outside of that zone as well as billboards. Make a motion to waive the three readings. Second. I have a motion and second to waive the three readings. All in favor of that signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Make a motion for adoption and the emergency, and the emergency clause as well. Second. We have a motion and second 
for adoption of the ordinance. It's ordinance 0 2262. Any further discussion on that? I would like to say something, if I could, since we're talking about signs and it doesn't you really have anything to do with this, but while it's under the broad thing of signs, I want us to address campaign signs mm. <laughs> because there are some signs that are up right now mm -hmm. and it kind of makes me a little bit angry when I'm seeing campaign signs and the election is not until November. It's, uh, well, without going into a, a great level of detail, there was a, a court case, Reed versus uh, City of Gilbert, Arizona, that deals with temporary signage. Uh, in, in the infinite wisdom of the Supreme Court, they have sort of prevented cities from having any ability to regulate the content of temporary signs. So political signage, we have to treat in a similar manner to other types of temporary signage. Um, one of the things, approaches that we have looked at is providing an allowance for certain types of temporary signs 90 days prior to a duly called election within Faulkner County in this jurisdiction, and then also That's extending that allowance for certain types of temporary, additional temporary signs 10 days after. Uh, so that, that might be a consideration that you'll see uh, when the regulations are brought forward. Uh, but again, we can't control what's on those. And so if somebody, let's say somebody else has a, a different type of permit uh, for a different type of sign, they can still display that type of message. It's not the way I would have it if I were czar of the world, but unfortunately I, that, I didn't wake up today being that way, so. Well, I probably November. took a little too Do much license in talking about that while we're talking about something else, but. Hope well, Sheila and I both thought we had something in place for that. Well, we had passed no? something we in died. the late 1990s. I mean, so it's that old. Uh, Council, you might address that. Yeah, in uh, 2006, it was amended, and there had been a, um, the only rule had been that uh, political signs had to be removed within 10 days of the election for which the political sign was erected. Mm -hmm. There was no uh, minimum time that it could be put up before. In 06, when the ordinance was amended, that 10-day restriction was dropped, mm -hmm. which, in in my opinion, was the correct move. Drop um, it? Yeah, I, I don't, because I, I think anytime you get it, anytime a government gets into the business of regulating signs on the basis of a message, it is a content-based restriction, and that's the easiest way to get in the constitutional trouble, First Amendment-wise. That That's read. But there, there may potentially be some regulations coming forward that address temporary signage within certain periods of election campaigns, not necessarily meant to address election campaigns, but just temporary signage that's allowed within that period, whatever the message may be. I would refer to it as good manners, but that's just yeah. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So anyway, thank you for that. Thanks, I appreciate James. it. We do have a uh, motion and a second to pass this ordinance establishing moratorium on sign permits, uh, uh, issuance of those. Uh, Mr. Garrett. Yeah. The ordinance 022-62. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. The emergency clause, Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. And that both, those, all that passes seven to zero. Uh, that does it for the Community Development Committee portion of the program. Next item is Public Service Committee, and on here we have an ordinance appropriating insurance funds received for the Parks and Recreation Department. And Mr. Fine, good yes, evening. Sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we had some damage done to the infrastructure at Pompey Park and We've received the insurance payment and that work scheduled to start this week. And we're just asking for you to move it over to our grounds account. Make a motion to waive three readings. Second. I have a motion and second to waive the three readings. All in favor of that signify by saying aye. 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 I make a motion. Seven oh. Make a I'm motion sorry. for adoption of the ordinance. Second. I have a motion and second to adopt the ordinance, ordinance O twenty two sixty three. And any discussion? Mr. Garrett. 
Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. That passes seven to zero. Next item on the agenda, and we move on to Public Safety Committee. First item here is an ordinance appropriating reimbursement funds for various entities for the Conway Police Department. And Chief Tapley, Good you're, evening. you're smiling Good evening. at me and probably uh, laughing on I feel like side. I'm taking up half the agenda tonight. <laughs> That's okay. We're glad to see. You. Hopefully we can get through it pretty quickly. Um, so we have received reimbursements for various things, extra duty uh, services, task force funds, insurance proceeds, uh, and one overpayment. We're just asking to appropriate this amount into the appropriate funds. Make a motion to waive the three readings. Second. Motion second to uh, waive the readings. Waive, thank you to waive the readings. I appreciate it. That's a senior moment if I've ever had one. <laughs> All in favor of waiving the three readings signify by saying aye. Aye. All um, opposed? That passes seven to zero. Make a motion for adoption of the ordinance. Second. I have a motion second to adopt the ordinance or to pass that. Uh, all in favor of that, Mr. Garrett. The ordinance 02264. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. That passes seven to zero. Chief Tapley, you're still there, so uh, yeah. we want to, the next item, appropriate funds for the purchase of a vehicle for the Conway Police Department. Chief? Yes. Uh, in July of 2021, uh, we had an insurance uh, for loss of vehicle. Uh, that was paid to us in the amount of $7,000. Uh, this year, we have sold vehicles in the amount of a little over $11,000. We're asking that uh, these funds be put back in to the appropriate account so we can purchase additional vehicles. Make a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. A motion second to waive the three readings. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That passes seven to zero. Make a motion for the adoption of the ordinance 02265. Second. And we have a motion and second for passage of that ordinance. All in, let's say Mr. Garrett, I'm sorry. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. That passes seven to nothing. Next item on the agenda is a resolution accepting funding from the state of Arkansas for the police officer stipend program for the Conway Police Department, and Chief Tapley, you're still with us. This has to do with the $5,000 stipend uh, for law enforcement officers uh, that is coming from the state. In order for us to submit that this Friday, July the 1st, uh, we have to have an ordinance in place or a resolution in place that states that you guys will accept the funds and, and put those into the appropriate accounts for payment. I make a motion for adoption of the resolution. Second. Motion and second for adoption of the resolution. Any discussion? How many full-time officers do we have? So uh, we are uh, slated for 127 full-time officers right now. Uh, we have approximately 120. Um, we, have a, we have four starting on July the 5th, so that will help. Uh -huh. We have some more leaving. It's a constant ebb and flow. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. okay, well, uh, the good thing is we are able to, this $5,000 mm -hmm. funding will go through next year. And as we get new officers, they will be eligible for that as well. That's great. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions of the chief? All in favor of accepting the funding in the resolution form, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That's resolution R2230. Correct. Next item is a resolution expressing the willingness of the Conway Police Department to utilize 2020 JAG funds. And chief? The JAG grant is something we normally get uh, in conjunction with the Faulkner County Sheriff's Department. It is used to buy equipment for our, uh, our departments. Uh, normally, Conway is the, the holder of this grant. This year, it is Faulkner County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the grant is, amount is $24,756, of which we will receive half. Um, and so we're asking you to, to accept that. So moved. Second. <clears throat> A motion and second to accept this uh, resolution. All in favor of that signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? That's resolution R2231. And that passes seven to zero. Next item is an ordinance to appropriate funding received from the 2020 JAG grant program 
uh, for the city of Conway Police Department and Chief Tapley, one more time. Yes, this is Actually, this is what we just spoke about. This is the twelve thousand three hundred seventy-eight dollars. We're asking for you to appropriate it so we can spend it. Make a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. We have a motion second to waive the readings. All in favor of waiving the readings, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. That passes seven to zero. Make a motion for adoption of the ordinance 02266. Second. We have a motion and second for adoption of the ordinance 02266. Um, any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. That passes seven to zero. Next item is an ordinance to approve personnel changes within the Conway Police Department. Chief? We are asking for four additional uh, patrol officer positions within the police department. Uh, two of these positions are connected to the mental health and wellness grant that we've talked about before, mm -hmm. uh, which will be reimbursed to the city in 80% in years one and two and 60% in year three. Uh, the two other positions are going to be slated for school resource officers. Um, the mayor has had conversations with uh, the school and they would like to enhance that program. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to have additional people to put into the system. Uh, our plans are to, if you approve this, is to hire, get them trained, um, and at that point then we can backfill with a more experienced officer into those positions. But we're, we're going to need to hire and train before we can, well, we can let go of the more them, yeah. You think that happened this school year though? to get those or not really? It, we're aiming for January. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, can't promise that. We had testing over the last month uh, for, for the positions we have open. After the written test um, and the physical test, before we get to the background, uh, we have four applicants. Mm. It's tough. Wow. It's tough right wow. now. Wow. Mm. That's wow. Make a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. We have a motion wow. and second to waive the three readings on this item. All in favor of that mm. signify by saying aye. 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 That passes seven to zero. Make a motion for adoption of the ordinance and the emergency clause. Second. We have a motion and second to pass the ordinance and the emergency clause. It's ordinance 02267. Seven. Correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Jones. Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. And the emergency clause, Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. And Ms. Isby? Yes. That passes seven to nothing as well. Mr. Jones, you get one demerit for talking out of turn. <laughs> Excuse me again. <laughs> She was saying I was make, checking to see if I, I, I was, I was, I was seeing if you were paying attention. Will you pass me again real soon? I can get you. You know what I told her? Full time? No. They won't put your palm time. No, my palm time is filled up. No. Next item on the agenda is an ordinance authorizing a reclassification of positions and salary changes for fleet maintenance within the Conway Police Department. And Chief, Me again. go again. <laughs> so a few meetings ago, um, you authorized me to take money out of our asset forfeiture program to start our own light duty shop. Um, when we did that, the gentleman that was um, oh. our fleet assistant uh, then took up the role of actually mechanic work. Uh, he is now doing the work on our vehicles. So we put this together basically to mirror uh, the the fire department's mechanic pay scale. Mm -hmm. um, it, there are a couple of changes. It doesn't go quite as high, but uh, based upon his new uh, job title and work, we're asking for these changes. I make a motion to waive the three readings. Second. I have a motion and second to waive the three readings on this ordinance. All in favor of waiving the readings, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That passes seven to zero. I make a motion for adoption of the ordinance and the emergency clause. Second. And we have an Motion and a second for passing this ordinance, approving these personnel changes. 02267 is our number. 68. 68. 68, I'm sorry. 68 is our number. My fault. Um, Mr. Garrett. Mr. Ledbetter. 
Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. In the emergency clause, Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. That passes seven to zero as well. <laughs> Next item is consideration uh, on this order or part of the uh, program is the consideration to approve entering into an agreement with the Conway Public Schools for school resource officers for the 2022-23 school year. And Chief Tapley, tell us something good here. Well, it's that time of year again. Uh, every July, we enter into an agreement with the school in reference to our school resource officer program. Uh, this year, the, the amount of pay uh, went up minimally, about $8,000. Uh, they, much like us, feel this is a great program. Uh, obviously, they want to to enhance it and continue it. So we would ask that you authorize the mayor to enter into this agreement. So moved. Second. A motion and second to enter into this agreement by ordinance. Um, just an agreement. Ordinance number is 69. Uh, is that correct? It is an agreement. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is an agreement. Um, all in favor of entering into this agreement, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes seven to zero. And finally, Chief, resolution authorizing entering into an agreement with counseling associates to implement the, the Connect and Protect grant for the Conway Police Department. Yes, this goes back to the grant that, that we've talked several times about. Uh, we are we're working very hard to, to get this into action, uh, and this would allow us to enter into an agreement with counseling associates who would pro provide the health care workers uh, to accompany our officers. I make a motion for the adoption of the resolution. Second. A motion and second to approve this agreement with counseling associates. All in favor of approving that signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That passes seven to zero. Chief Tapley, yeoman's work, sir. Yeah, I, will, I will do my best not to have so much on the next one, but no <laughs> promises. No promises. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you for what you do. Chief. Yes. I've got a quick question. Yes, who Who is going to take over Officer Townsend's? Or, or, is somebody moving up to that position? Yes, uh, Sergeant Danny Worley. Oh, okay. Uh, he's cool. going to do that. He is uh, He is going to be a great fit for that I, position. I, I agree. Yeah. I believe that he will. Was Thank Chuck you. retiring? Did he retire? Yes. He did. Okay. He retired at uh, the, the end of June. Okay. So, I didn't realize that. Or the end of May. I'm sorry. Beginning of June. At the end of school. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Follow Warren tonight. Thanks, Chief. Moving on to finance portion of the agenda. We have an ordinance appropriating funds for employee pay adjustments for various departments in the city of Conway. And Mr. Grimes, are you going to talk about this or is this? I'm going to briefly go through it. Go right um, ahead. The way we did in committee meeting. This was talked about in committee meeting. I won't repeat everything. But basically, we did this last year for the first time. We compared city salaries, Conway city salaries, to the municipal league's salary survey. And because we, the city competes with private employers, but also with other cities for employees, we want to make sure our employees, when compared to the cities, rank as, as good as they can. And so we've identified certain job, uh, job titles that fall in the bottom 20% of the municipal league survey, and a few others that fall into the bottom third, but mostly the bottom 20%. And we've identified those to receive a mid-year bump in pay to help compensate them and get them better higher on the municipal league's scale. We did this last year and it worked out well. In addition to that, we're going to take all, we have 43 positions that pay under $15 an hour. Uh, the mayor and Lisa and Avery Williams has, have wanted to get those to $15 an hour for a while and it's the right thing to do for a lot of reasons. It'll make a big difference. But look, some of them paid $12.38 an hour. Mm -hmm. We're competing as fast food places mm -hmm. to pay more than that. So. 43 positions will now move to a minimum, well, starting at $15 an hour. That'll add $81,000 annually to the general fund. The positions that we are adjusting due to the salary scale for the municipal league will add 116,000 from the general fund for a total of about 208,000 annually. The raiser effective July 1. So this year will hit uh, half that by $104,000. To make a motion to waive the three readings. Second. A motion and second to waive the three readings on this item. Uh, 
Mr. Garrett. Uh, all in favor of waiving those readings say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes seven to zero. Make a motion for the adoption of the ordinance 02269. Second. We have a motion and second to adopt the ordinance. Any further discussion? Any questions from Mr. Grimes or Mr. Winningham? I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. It is. Thank you. It's always a good thing we can give our employees yes. a little more money. Always. Mr. Garrett. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. And that passes 7 to 0. And that was uh, Ordinance 69? Correct. Is that yes. correct? Thank you. And the final item of business that I have on the agenda is an ordinance appropriating funds for settlement offer in the Kayla Jones versus City of Conway case. And Mr. Finkenbinder, I'm going to let you visit about this for a while if you would. Thank you. All right. So this is this came from the um, court uh, settlement conference that we all attended uh, previously on this case <clears throat> at the conclusion of which or during the course of which the Municipal League, uh, who represents the city in this matter, um, recommended a settlement. 90% <clears throat> of it would be paid for by the Municipal League, 10% of it would be paid for by the city. So the, rec the recommended settlement amount, which was uh, expressly made subject to city council approval, was $110,000. So that would mean $11,000 would need to be paid by the city and the remainder would be paid by the Municipal League. Make a motion to waive the three readings. Second. We have a motion and second to waive the three readings on this. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 That passes seven to zero. Make a motion for the adoption of the ordinance. I have it as 02270. Second. We have a motion and second for adoption of this ordinance. 02270. Any further discussion? By anyone? No? A good negotiation. Both parties feel like they got a little bit screwed, so I feel like that's what happened. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Probably a good way to put it. Mr. Garrett, if you'll call this vote. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. That passes seven to zero. Is there any other business to come before yeah, this like, body tonight? Like to say, I wish I hadn't said that. Mark just like sent me a text here. and said he's not going to be here next meeting. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> hold on. Let me send you one and tell you where I'm going to be. <laughs> you just should have been in the bullpen a little longer because you're starting to get better toward the last. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know you're a little rusty. Yeah, well, a lot of rusty. I, we, I'm here not judging. Good. Here comes rusty. No judgment on my part. Okay. Anything else? Make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We're adjourned. <laughs>